Alessandra? Yeah. Do you want me to do it now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good time. Okay, so I would like to thank all the speakers of the Secure Computation session. Um, it was a very good one. Uh, and um, yeah, thanks everybody for the questions and for participating. And I'd like to thank the, the, the moderators of this session, uh, Elet Nishant, Eyal, and Alessandra. So thanks a lot. And all speakers of the session. This was a very lively session. So thanks. Thank you all. OK, we are broadcasting so, on YouTube and recording. Go ahead. OK. So let me start the screen sharing first. Sorry, somehow it's it's not allowing me to to share. Okay. All right, everybody, welcome to the the membership meeting of uh, Eurocrypt 2020. Uh, so this is a uh, not only my first. First uh, membership meeting as an ACR president, but I I also got lucky to be the first one to hold it virtually. Like I wish I could be in Croatia right now, uh, speaking directly to you. But uh, on the other hand, it seems that uh, the this virtual meeting has also attracted a, a lot of people, much more than the usual conference. So for that, we it actually it was a very good turnout, and I'm very glad for this result. So, sorry, just one second. So here, just a quick uh, uh, overview of the the agenda for today's meeting. First, uh, we'll start by giving a, a brief overview about the ACR and uh, the different uh, conferences that we have and the different publications and as well as journals. Then later on, we're gonna have a financial report that will be given by the treasurer, uh, Brian Lamacchia, and uh, a membership report that will be given by Douglas Stabila. Uh, then uh, we'll recall some of the online services and, uh, and recent developments that we had uh, w within the board, and the, the interesting part that is always the open discussions in which we'll, you can type in over during the chat your questions uh, to me and to all the members of the board. So first, uh, the International uh, Association for Cryptolo Cryptological Research was founded in 1983 with the purpose to uh, further the research in cryptology in related fields. And it's a nonprofit organization. If you would like to obtain some more information, you can look at the, the documents that are available at aacr.org slash docs. In one picture, uh, we can see here that uh, there are several entities associated with uh, IACR. On top of everything, we have the membership assembly, which we have once uh, in every general conference every year, like this one. And uh, and then we have the board of directors of which I am the president, and which includes several offices, elected directors, but also steering committee member representatives, editors, and others. And we have, and, this is responsible for running the day-to-day -day business of ACR. And another committee that is independent of the board is the fellows committee, which is responsible for choosing uh, member, the new fellows every year. In terms of, uh, uh, in addition to the conferences and the journals, so there were some recent uh, additions to ACR. For instance, a real world crypto symposium which uh, has been part of ICR now for uh, three years. And uh, the ICR schools, and this has been more or less uh, six years ago. 
So uh, by attending uh, an ACI event, every member becomes, uh, uh, every attendee becomes a member for the next calendar year. So in particular, by attending Eurocrypt 2020, you become a member for 2021. So the membership fee for regular members is, is $50 and the half of that price for students. But uh, we also give uh, uh, the option for people to become a member online. So in particular, if you have not attended a conference last year, you, have, you can renew your membership online for this year until September. Uh, the board of directors has uh, like the four officers, that is the, the president, uh, the vice president, the treasurer, and the secretary, and nine elected directors. In addition to that, we also have several uh, appointed directors that includes the, the general chairs of uh, the, the area conferences, that is Eurocrypt, the Crypto, and Asia Crypt for the uh, the current year and for the following year. In addition to that, we have uh, also observers representing uh, the steering committees of uh, as Asia Crypt and some area conferences such as CHESS, PKC, uh, Real World Crypto. So for more information, you can uh, check on uh, bod.html, the exact list of the members of the board. And every year you elect three directors and the information about the next year, this year's election will be will appear on elections to, uh, slash 2020. The current uh, uh, members of the board are listed here, uh, including myself. And here you can see uh, some members, uh, in particular, uh, we have uh, Matsayuka Abe, Dan uh, Lepoint, and Moti Young. They're they'll be up for re-election if they decide to to present themselves again. In addition to that, the other uh, board members, they're listed here. In terms of publication, uh, first, uh, one of the main journals uh, uh, of ACR is the Journal of Cryptology, whose uh, editor-in-chief is Kenny Partisan, whose term ends at the end of this year. So people can, of course, read, uh, access it online. But for those who uh, opt for a printed version of this journal, they can do so by opting in with a, by paying $40 extra. And in addition to the Journal of Cryptology, we now have uh, uh, two transactions. The first one being uh, the IACR Transactions on Symmetric Cryptology. With, uh, which is a, hybrid, a conference hybrid. In particular, these transactions, they publish the proceedings of FSE and any paper that uh, appears uh, in, in TOSC gives, gives a presentation at FSE. So uh, what, about, what is nice about this journal is that uh, they have, it comes with a wrapped in, in a strict review schedule. And another point is that it also provides code and open access. So people have access to the actual, to the publisher version as soon as the paper appears online. Similarly, for the chess conference, we have the transactions on cryptographic hardware and embedded systems, which is also a conference journal hybrid. And as in the case of the FSC, every publication in TCHES gives a, a, a presentation at CHES. And like the other one is also gold, uh, gold open access. In addition to, to this, we also have uh, the proceedings of conferences, in particular, uh, Asia Crypt, Crypto, Eurocrypt, PKC, and TCC. RWC being a symposium actually does not have proceedings. And here, uh, it's all members can access this information online uh, uh, from day one, but we also have golden open access, but only after three years through the uh, Springer website. Another publication venue is the Cryptology Print Archive, which has been extremely successful 
and has in, in recent years have, have attracted more than 1,000 uh, uh, submissions per year. And uh, there are some interesting uh, notes about it. For instance, the record for the number of uh, revisions of a paper is uh, 124 which is a paper which turned out to be withdrawn. <laughs> and the editors of uh, ePrint are uh, Yop uh, Boz and Tancred Lepon. As I said, in addition to the conference, we also have uh, for a few years now, uh, cryptology schools. The idea of such schools is actually more educational and to provide uh, more focused uh, learning. In particular, these schools last about a week and they usually happen different seasons. And we, the ICR in this case provides support for speakers and publicity. Uh, there are several, uh, the list of schools can be found on the icr.org slash schools. And the, uh, among the upcoming schools, we have the Azogen Basic Cryptography, uh, the School on Encrypted Search in Morocco, and Theory and Practice of Multi-Party Computation. Uh, as you may notice, uh, I didn't add dates for these events. Some of them uh, were already expected to have happened, but due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, these events uh, ended up being postponed in some cases. So then if you intend to run a proposal uh, a school, you would like uh, to have support from ICR, please submit your, pro uh, your, requ your request for support. The next proposals are due on June 30th. Another important aspect of uh, ACR is uh, uh, the distinguished lecture. This is an annual, uh, annual le is a lecture that is given annually and by in, it's true in is the ACR board that uh, it selects the, the speakers. And this happens every year in a particular conference. So it alternates between Eurocrypt and crypto and Asia crypt. Uh, the next uh, uh, distinguished lecture will be Sivan Mikali, who is supposed to give his, um, his lecture at crypto, which will also happen virtually. And uh, in the in 2021, it will be Andrew, Andrew Yao who would give his lecture at Asia Crypt. As I said, uh, another uh, important aspect of ACR is the, the fellows category. And these are outstanding ACR members that are recognized for their, uh, their contributions to, just a second there are technical and professional contributions to the field, in particular to advance the science uh, of uh, uh, in the technology and practice of cryptology and related fields, but also to promote free exchange of ideas and inf information about cryptology and related fields. So, in, in, in this year, we have, we're happy to announce that uh, we, uh, there are five new fellows, the members that got elevated to the status of fellow. And th these are uh, Evgeny Dodis, uh, Rosario Gennaro, Shwejia Lai, Tao Malkin, and, and David Nakash. So for my information on the fellows program and how to submit uh, an application to support uh, for a fellow, you can look at the fellows website. Another important award that uh, that has been uh, that we started to to uh, to give at the ACR conference is the Test of Time Award, and these are uh, given yearly for each of the the main general conferences. That is uh, Eurocrypt, Crypto, and Asia Crypt. And this, the goal of this uh, award is to recognize papers that have had that uh, papers that have had uh, lasting impact on the field. And for, in particular, the rules of the award is that uh, for uh, awards in, uh, in 2020, 
for instance, it, it, there will be, there were on a paper that were published at the, the same conference 15 years prior. And this is, is also selected by a committee that includes two members appointed by the board, plus uh, three program chairs of the, of the given year. So for uh, this year, we had uh, three, uh, the, the, uh, the, the winners of this award are first uh, Amit Sahai and Brent Waters for fuzzy identity-based encryption, which was appeared at uh, Eurocrypt 2005. Then uh, Xiao Yang Wang, Yikan Lisa Yin and Hong Bo Yu for the, the paper Finding Collisions in the full Sha one that appeared in uh, Crypto 20, 2005. And finally, uh, Pascal Payet and Damien Vigneault uh, for the paper, discrete log based signatures may not be equivalent to discrete log, which appear at Asia Crypto uh, 2005. Normally these awards are given in person at the conference, but uh, due to the circumstances, we were not able to, to do that uh, this year at the Eurocrypt. Uh, and uh, for in the case of uh, uh, for this paper, we will eventually wait for the next physical conference, in-person conference to be able to award, giving these awards in person. So next uh, it's the financial report by Brian, Brian Lamacchia. So I will stop my sharing. Great, and I will share my screen. All right, can you all see my slides? Are they coming through? Yes, yes, they're coming through. Okay, great. Um, all right, so hello everyone. Uh, I am Brian Lamaki, your treasurer, and uh, here's my financial report on the state of the IUCR's finances uh, as of Europe 2020. Um, the high level points, uh, we continue to have a robust financial position. Uh, as is our tradition, we measure assets in terms of number of bits. Uh, we're at uh, 21.38 bits. Uh, we have dropped a fractional bit um, due to uh, market conditions, which I'll get to later, um, but we're still in a very strong position. Uh, our administrative overhead to run the IACR continues to be very low, less than 3% of our overall uh, revenue or you know, operating income from uh, the conferences we run. Uh, now that may go up this year because uh, as we have fewer uh, in-person conferences, uh, our income will drop and the uh, administrative expenses for this year will be a bit higher as a percentage, but overall we're running very lean. And over the past year, uh, we spent uh, 47,250 approximately on student speaker support through the Cryptography Research Fund for Student Speakers. And we paid out about 15,000 in school support and another 20,000 that was approved by the board and communicated back to schools, but which has been deferred because those schools have been deferred to uh, a later point in time due to COVID-19. So, uh, you know, we've been able to, to allocate, you know, $80,000 or something for student support and school support. We just, um, some of that's been delayed we'll, and, and we have the money set aside. If we look at conference attendance by year, here's a reflection back of conference attendance to 2017. Uh, you can see the spike, and I generated this graph last night when your crypt attendance was at uh, 1,208. I believe we're at at least 1,211, 1,212 now. So we've uh, obviously set a record for that. Um, but if you look at our membership, you'll see uh, since the addition of RWC in 2018, it's continued to improve uh, and in January of this year, set a record for inverts that attendance at an ICR event of 655. Um, but our events, you know, have been growing in attendance. And in fact, when we, we see some of that, that also translates into uh, additional revenue, uh, depending on how we budget for, for conferences. Um, here is the summary of income and expenses for each conference in 2019, plus RWC 2020. Now, as a reminder, we aim to budget to zero. That is the profit or loss for a conference we hope 
is break even. And we don't mind if we go over and under a little bit because uh, you know you try to budget as best you can. You don't know what actual attendance is gonna be. If you look at the column on the right, we made a bunch of money in 2019. That was not our intent. Um, and uh, what I normally do is I use uh, excess funds above and beyond what we would normally uh, invest to plow back and subsidize events in, in, in the following year. So I tell uh, general chairs to budget a little bit under and effectively we subsidize that out because our goal here is, is you know, to run a nonprofit organization with sufficient assets in reserve to fund activities in case of a crisis situation. In the case of RWC 2019, uh, they had, a, and in crypto 2019, both conferences had, as far as I can tell, very good sponsorship above what had been budgeted. They also had attendance above what had been budgeted um, and therefore that led to a bit of overages. Uh, PKC 2019 uh, came in way under the expected budget. So they had budgeted very conservatively. We had set fees based on that basis and then their expenses came in much lower leading to a $24,000 surplus. Uh, the other surpluses are roughly in like for Ches and for Eat for uh, Eurocrip last year are you know within sort of a little bit of, of leeway given um, increased attendance and what we would have expected. Um, the TCC, TCC last year ran lean as well. We lost a little bit of money on Asia Cup, perfectly fine. And RWC 20 this year, uh, we kind of budgeted better and, um, and, and expected to have greater attendance. And so, uh, you know, lost under 2000. So we're perfectly fine on that. Of the 241,000 we made, uh, you know, that some of that then goes into reserves and the rest of it get, would normally be used for subsidizing events this year. Um, we do also track uh, the cost of our events, uh, inflation adjusted. So this is a graph we've started using the past uh, couple of years uh, that uh, Douglas uh, and I are maintaining to watch trends in uh, uh, conference attendance fees uh, because we are trying not to make money off our conference fees and we want to make sure that we're not spiking um, you know, our registration fees. And you can see that while we kind of bounce around, the trend lines are growing somewhat short, uh, slowly. Uh, these are inflation adjusted dollars, um, but um, you know, we, are, we are maintaining you know, reasonable expenses to attend the conferences and trying to avoid spikes uh, uh, in costs. Right now, now a question about FSE 2020. Uh, there's a question about FSE 2020. Okay, I can't. How do I get to the questions? I think the issue is because some people see members being added due to FSE, but is uh, this is related to how we post ah, the event? Yes. Okay. So this, if we're if the question is about the 77 people here on FSE, what happened in those cases was people registered for FSE, and then went when FSC had to be delayed be first initially because the, uh, the Greek Ministry of Health first initially said, you know, no conferences for the four weeks that included uh, FSC, we offered everybody in FSC the option of either maintaining their memberships uh, just for when FSC got delayed until November, or we would refund the membership to them. And so the fact that there's 77 people that are listed as attending FSC is, those are the people who have registered for FSC at the initial date and have chosen to maintain uh, their registrations. Uh, in contrast for Eurocrypt and PKC, we did a bulk refund. For FSC, we decided not to do that because we were able to shift the event at the same cost. And therefore we didn't like lose any deposits with the venue, hotel and things like that, just into a later date in November. And so that's why it's showing up as, as 77 people. So they're pre-registered basically for the event in November. That's what that number is. Uh, any other questions at this point that answer it? Okay, great. Let me move on. Uh, so that number, this number, now let's talk about COVID-19. Top level, high, high bit, we have sufficient reserves to weather COVID-19, we're, we're fine. Um, you know, the IACR has a strong financial position. Uh, in fact, we have not lost any deposits yet due to COVID-19 cancellations. All of the venues that we were already involved in for events this year and next year 
Um, we haven't delayed anything next year, but for the events this year, we have worked with all of the venues to basically um, just move those events forward. So that's why FSE went to November. Um, our engagements with the venue for Eurocrypt, the venues for PKC have all been fine. So we haven't lost any money and we're taking a very conservative view because of the ongoing uncertainty for events potentially through the rest of 2020 in making sure that the contracts that we're signing for venues going forward have sufficient clauses so that we kind of structure, you know, when we have to back out, if we ever have to back out again, and, you know, any cancellation penalties or things like that. But we haven't had to pay any of that yet. Uh, not even, you know, with crypto, we're perfectly fine. Um, now, our investments are held in a mix of short term cash. Uh, investment grade bond funds and stock index funds. So these are these are conservative market baskets of, and even the bond funds are index funds too. Um, over, if you look at where we were from over this calendar year, from you know the end of 2019 to the end of, of April, the last month, our investments are down uh, about 5.4%. Okay, over that period of time, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 14.7%. The S&P 500 is down 9.3%. So we have seen a small decrease in the value of our assets because, well, the market's down and that's not, not unexpected, but our balance is basically okay and is appropriate for an organization of our size with a very conservative investment outlook. So, um, you know, we certainly have more than sufficient cash to cover, um, you know, way more in terms of cancellation penalties and things like that than anything we have had to face. Uh, we're still able to fund all our operations just fine. We're still able to support students and support schools when they start up. So there's no there's no ongoing issues to the organization. We're okay, um, but you know, we did suffer like everybody else did. We saw a drop in investments, but we also saw a run up in the value of some of our investments earlier uh, as the market increased. So that's to be expected. Um, at every membership meeting, uh, the treasurer is tasked with making a membership fee recommendation and in particular uh, notifying the membership if the treasurer believes there needs to be any change in the membership fee, uh, given our strong financial position, uh, given our low uh, administrative expenses, I do not see any reason to change our membership fee at this time. So I continue to recommend the $50 full member and $25 student member rate. Okay, thank you. That concludes uh, my report. I'm happy to take more questions at this time if they're specific to finance. And I will stop sharing my screen. Michelle, you're muted. Thank you. I, was, I had to cough, so I had to mute myself. Uh, the next part of the agenda is uh, the membership report by Douglas. So Douglas, feel free to start sharing your screen. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, as, uh, as Brian uh, and uh, Michelle both indicated, uh, there are a few different categories of IOCR membership, regular members uh, for a fee of $50 a year, student members. We also have a third category, senior members. So those are for uh, members who are 65 years of age or older and who have had 20 years of cumulative membership. Uh, you're a member for 2020. If you attended an ICR event in 2019, uh, sorry, I should say you're a member for 2020. If you attended an ICR conference in 2019 and you did not, not opt out of membership, or you renewed your membership for 2020 uh, directly online uh, from now until September 30th. Attending Eurocrypt right now uh, makes you a member for 2021 unless you opt out. The ICR works on a rolling cycle for memberships. Um, you can see more information about your membership on the ISCR website, and that allows you to update your contact info, uh, view membership history, and renew your membership. If you uh, subscribe to paper copies of the Journal of Cryptology, you can see what issues are coming and uh, which ones have been uh, sent to check that you've received them. Um, you can download copies of your receipts if you need them for reimbursement purposes, and you can view the list of recent conference attendees for those who opted in to be listed on the membership, uh, on the conference attendance list. Uh, by being a member of the ICR, uh, you gain access to all of our current and past ICR publications online, uh, even those that are not uh, yet open access from Springer. 
Uh, it also gives you the ability to run for IACR leadership positions and vote in IACR elections, referenda, and membership meetings. Uh, you can nominate and be nominated for an IACR fellowship. Um, your membership also supports your International Scholars Society and goes to some of the activities Brian mentioned, such as our uh, schools. Uh, and you also have the option to get a paper copy of the Journal of Cryptology. Um, as is usual, I'll give you a few membership statistics. So our membership for 2020 is uh, a record high of 2,421 members so far. We are already collecting memberships for 2021. Uh, again, those who attended Eurocrypt 2020 are already members for 2021, and we're well on track to a large number of members for 2021 as well. You can also see the impact that RWC had uh, when it joined the RSA community in terms of increasing our membership on an ongoing basis. Uh, I also show you the membership source. This is the first conference in the year where someone became a member. And we can see we continue to get uh, lots of new members from RWC. Uh, in particular, uh, each year in RWC, we've had nearly 300 or more attendees who were never ICR members before. So RWC continues to uh, bring new, uh, new members of the community into IACR. Um, I also show you some uh, statistics by geography on what countries our members are coming from. Um, as I was preparing these statistics, I also wanted to show you just a little bit of interesting things about uh, the impact of bringing Eurocrypt online. So we've already heard about the attendance being much higher. Um, what's interesting is to see how this has expanded the reach of IACR as well. So this year we have uh, more people uh, attending from different countries than uh, in past years. So we have 54 uh, different countries represented in the attendance at Eurocrypt 2020. And also we have a substantially higher fraction of attendees from outside of Europe and North America, which are traditionally our largest segments of attendance. So we're getting uh, nearly three times as many attendees from outside of uh, uh, Europe and North America for our online Eurocrypt. And uh, here's just a, a map showing as well all the different countries that uh, have attendees. So that's all I have to report. I'm happy to take any questions um, or pass it back to you, Michelle. All right, so uh, let me start screen sharing again. So, now that we're done with the membership reports, let me just uh, review some of the services that uh, have been provided by uh, uh, ICR, in particular, some of the online services. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, uh, Fontaine uh, for being the communications secretary and you for being uh, the webmasters. And, uh, as you, a uh, few things that changed last year uh, that I would like to point out is uh, like the website has become uh, uh, mobile friendly. And as you can see here, there are several different ways in which you can also follow ICR news via Twitter, Facebook, uh, email. And and you, here you can see how, like if you open this in a, in, a, in, a, in your cell phone, that now we have a much better way of uh, actually accessing the information, which was not the case uh, in the past. And uh, we also have the capability of doing searches uh, that is, is quite useful. And for, the, for all these additions, I would like to thank uh, uh, Kay McCalley and Kevin Mar McCurdy that uh, have been responsible for all these changes and also for implementing the whole infrastructure which you are uh, using right now for the virtual conference. <laughs> that was a, a very big endeavor and I'm uh, very thankful to them. So in addition, uh, here is a summary of the online services that are uh, we have at the ACR, I already mentioned the uh, cryptology uh, ePrint archive. And in addition, addition to that, uh, members can have access to journals and proceedings uh, using their membership space. Uh, uh, so in, these are, you have access to the Springer versions and also to the ICR versions. 
We also have other features like open positions in cryptology in which people can post uh, their uh, job openings. Uh, we have a calendar of events, uh, which uh, includes not only IECR conference, but other conferences as, as well in cryptography and related fields. And also we have other things that are quite useful, such as crypto uh, bibliography, crypto DB, uh, petitions, uh, PhD database. So uh, for those of you, uh, uh, now we have a lot of features that can be done in particular, for instance, you can subscribe to news alert in which you can not only, you can have a much fine, uh, select more carefully what kind of announcement alerts you would like to receive. In particular, this could be general announcements, uh, information such uh, e print new e-print reports, which would be a more, it would, would which would happen more often. Uh, job openings, if you're in, a, in the job market, and e events. And as I said, you can follow this through a variety of means, including Facebook, Twitter, Weibo, and uh, email. Uh, as as you can see here, a member through the member uh, link, you can actually uh, go and access all of this information. So, by in this particular case, uh, members can have access to the publisher versions but these are uh, for all years, but this is only available to members. After two years, everybody can access the IECR version. This is the version that you submit before uh, uh, to, to Springer. So the, before they actually turn this into a proceedings version. And the publisher version is actually available after three years. So, uh, if you're, you are always in need of help, in particular at this moment with the implementation of uh, virtual conferences, uh, we always need help from the membership and for other volunteers. So Kevin is an example of somebody who has spent a lot of time uh, implementing this on a volunteer basis. Uh, but also it's important to mention that like the, Eurocrypt 2020 would not be possible without all the people that act as moderators, the program chairs that uh, were able to to set up the program, adjust uh, the whole uh, program to this online version, which uh, required a lot of uh, work. Uh, Leila and, uh, and Stefan also have been able to to help with this change to the online site and. Uh, and uh, also with the setup of this uh, virtual conference, we've been we've got a lot of help. But of course, if you have other ideas, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. So now uh, I would like to cover some of the current topics that uh, we've been discussing in the board. Uh, of course, the the last few months. Uh, the main thing has been the impact that COVID-19 have had uh, has had in our conferences, and um, and this led to the implementation of uh, virtual conferences, which has taken a, a big chunk of, a big chunk of our work. And another few changes that happened uh, starting uh, that were decided in prior years with uh, parallel co-chair uh, model. So, in the, and also the, the introduction of workshops, which are now an integral part of AsiaCrypt, Crypto, AeroCrypt. This was supposed to happen outside AeroCrypt 2020, but unfortunately due to the, the pandemic, this, uh, the workshops were canceled. Uh, in addition to that, I uh, also would like to mention the, some changes to journal cryptology. And we're always aware also and paying attention to difficulties that our members have with visas and problems with uh, international exchange. So uh, let me start with uh, first uh, with the journal cryptology. Uh, 
So right now, the current system, uh, we have uh, two, uh, two types of papers. Papers, once they, they get accepted, they, uh, they appear online, but they are not formally assigned to an issue. So this created a category which is known as online first. And usually paper, uh, papers stay there uh, for about nine to 12 months. In, in, in starting 2021, we're actually going to switch to a different publication model, which is known as continuous article publishing. And in this case, papers will be assigned to an issue as soon as they, uh, they are produced by Springer. As, as soon as the authors submit their final version and Springer um, does the editing, papers will be assigned to an issue. And the issue closes as, in, as soon as uh, we have enough papers in this, uh, in this issue. So the advantage of that is that we no longer have the, uh, would no longer have this online first category and papers would be uh, indexed more quickly. And as I said, this change starts in 2021. The second change that I mentioned is the parallel program co-chair model. So up to 2009, we usually had a single chair for every IACR general conference and they would, uh, uh, be a chair just for the, the given year. And then as, uh, in, in 2009, we started implementing the rolling co-chair model, which uh, for instance, ZeroCrypt is still, this year is still working under this model in which the chair would be, uh, uh, pro somebody would be appointed as program chair for two consecutive years. And the idea is that uh, every, uh, and the idea is to keep maintain some type of memory in the system so that they learn the job in the, the first year and uh, in the second year, they can uh, pass on that experience. So starting in, uh, now in 2020 and 2021, we started, we switched to the parallel co-chair mod in which we have two new chairs uh, assigned every year to each general conference. To deal with the issue of uh, memory, uh, we also have uh, members of the previous, uh, pre previous PC chairs becoming advisory members uh, for, for the current year. And uh, future PC chairs, they also, they, they participate in some of the discussions that take place at the, the prior year so that they already learn the job without having to actually uh, over the additional work, which had become uh, quite uh, significant. So as I said, uh, there were several, uh, uh, the important issues that I, even though I mentioned first and list leaving now towards the, for the end of this part, is the impact that COVID-19 has had in our ICR conferences. So uh, to start several conferences were converted to digital format. Eurocrypt, uh, which is happening now, we maintain more or less the same dates as the, as the original plan. PKC was supposed to happen uh, uh, towards the beginning of May and it's gonna take place, take place uh, now at the beginning of June, but in a virtual manner. Crypto 2020, as you probably received the announcement recently, has also been converted to, to, to a virtual conference. We've approximately, and we maintain more or less the same dates. Instead of starting on Sunday, we start on Monday. And finally, Chess, whose dates uh, have not yet been uh, decided, but they're likely to, re uh, to remain approximately the same. So in addition to that, another conference that was postponed, it was FSC. And as Brian was mentioning uh, during the, his answer to Maria, is that uh, uh, we, in order to, make, to avoid the, those, uh, the expenses because uh, uh, the crisis coincided more or less with the begin when, with the time that FSC was supposed to take place in March. And it was clear that we would not be able to host uh, the conference uh, at that time. 
and it was not clear to us how that the, the crisis would be, or whether we could, uh, if it would make sense to postpone by a few months. At the time, uh, the easiest solution, uh, since we already had made all the financial commitments, uh, was to actually postpone it to November. So in addition to that, uh, as I said, uh, the change to Eurocrypt, for instance, has also had some implications for future editions of Eurocrypt. So in particular, uh, Eurocrypt 2021 will now uh, be in Zagreb and uh, instead of uh, 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 in Norway, and Eurocrypt 2022 will happen in, in Norway. Some other conferences uh, have so far have not changed, such as TCC Asia Crypt and uh, Real World Crypto 2021, because they're still a bit far ahead. But uh, we are, of course, paying attention, uh, uh, monitoring the situation. And we are already taking measures in case some of these conferences have to be, uh, need to be postponed or turned into a virtual conference. Of course, we will keep the membership, the members always aware of these changes as soon as we, uh, we learn more about it. Unfortunately, uh, the virtual conference for Europe, uh, uh, one impact that we had is that the associated workshops were canceled. Although we, uh, in a virtual setting, in principle, we could uh, actually implement some of these workshops online. For instance, in in, in weeks next uh, around Eurocrypt, for instance, the week before or the week after, it, it seemed uh, that this didn't seem like the best solution for us because. There were too many uncertainties surrounding the implementation of a virtual conference, and our goal was to first focus on Eurocrypt itself. And but for future events, we will consider uh, holding some of these associated workshops online for those conferences that are taking place uh, taking place online. Finally, uh, an important point about the implementation of virtual conferences is that uh, we try to find our uh, best way to implement this uh, in a way that simulates a bit the in-person, uh, the experience that we have in an in-person event. Unfortunately, it's clear that we cannot have the same uh, thing like the chats that we have in the, when meeting people outside or uh, all the interactions that we can have during a conference is not the same. Uh, we certainly don't have a banquet, although some people may have some um, um, after they, they attend their talks here. But uh, clearly we try to find a solution that was uh, convenient and could simulate some, uh, some of the nice features of an in-person conference. So for that, uh, we found that uh, uh, we wanted to have a more interactive uh, solution. So this came, uh, we came up with the idea of uh, of this uh, of having these panels, and this is an idea uh, uh, that came up. Uh, like Kevin and Kay have been uh, the main people driving this uh, implementation, and. Uh, in, and we also have pre-recorded videos, which people can uh, watch for to see the whole details of a paper. But of course, uh, sometimes pre-recorded videos, not everybody likes them, and it's not the same as a live event. And because of that, we also decided to have uh, these short introductory uh, talks by the speakers of a session, which are uh, short, like they're five minutes long, but at least they give an idea for those uh, people who didn't have time to watch the full video. But in addition to that, uh, and uh, we also decided to implement these uh, uh, using uh, Zoom and YouTube. We actually discussed this uh, several options. And the main point for our decision was that we needed something that was reliable that could scale, and 
we understand that uh, there were several issues related to the use of Zoom. People have been complaining uh, about the security issues, and we we are aware of these issues. And uh, what I would like to state clearly here is that our use of Zoom or YouTube does not constitute an endorsement of these technologies. And one of the features that also made that we used as the basis for a decision a decision is the fact that attendees are not required to install Zoom software to attend a webinar. Of course, not all of the features are there for, uh, uh, for those to, who do not have a desktop client or, an, or the application, but uh, we will continue to study our alternative solutions and this, this Solutions are not final, but uh, for now they seem to be the best one of uh, the best ones available for our case. But in addition to the Zoom and the Q and A, uh, the Q and A that it provides, we also have live chats available at uh, chatisr.org. And for that, we we use a, a Zulip, which is similar to Slack, and it has a lot of the same features as Slack. As Slack but had, had the advantage that it could be self-hosted. Of course, it also has some of the, the, the disadvantages that sometimes uh, by being hosting ourselves, sometimes uh, it can crash once we have a lot of people attending. <laughs> and finally, uh, another feature that I don't know if uh, some of you were able to use is that we can have some small group video conferencing using Jitsi. And uh, so that's the point that I wanted to make about us, uh, some of the uh, the issues that we considered when implementing a virtual conference. And now the next uh, part is the open discussion in which uh, would, we would take uh, some of these uh, uh, questions online. So, of course, uh, uh, people would need to type their questions using the the chat. So, so let me just wait if uh, anybody has any questions. I'm not. Uh, uh, yes, Kevin. I'd like to say a couple of words about the virtual conference. Um, choices we made. These are always subject to revision. And uh, this is our first attempt. This is the best we can come up with for this particular time frame. And there's another conference, uh, PKC, which is June 1 through 4. We will probably use pretty much the same thing, though I'm actually curious to try using the Zoom large meeting format instead of the Zoom webinar format. That would show all the people's faces on screen. And um, I'm not sure how to test that. Um, because, you know, we can't run an event with, you know, 500 people easily. <laughs> I guess we can try to recruit people. To please join us on this date. Um, I think if you have uh, suggestions for how to change things, you, you probably should send them to virtual-conferences at icr.org or try to go to the Zulip chat and participate in the discussion there. Or you can just send email to uh, the board or others. So I'm just trying to look at some of the of the questions. Uh, so there is one question by Chloe uh, about uh, the carbon footprint, uh, ways to reduce it as a community. Actually, uh, this is an interesting question. Of course, uh, uh, let's just say that at this moment, the carbon footprint has been drastically reduced. But this is, of course, a, a, a temporary uh, situation. But one of the points that we will consider in the future that uh, I didn't bring up here in my slides is the possibility of having hybrid conferences. And that is, uh, in addition to the to physical attendance, people will also be able to register for the conference and attend the conference uh, uh, virtually. 
this uh, now that we have the we are learning how to do this uh, virtual conference before that idea seemed uh, hard to implement but now that we we were forced to to do so uh, it makes is a natural extension of course there are, uh, there are a lot of questions on how to implement this uh, would we maintain the same format uh, uh, just regular talks and people just listen to them? Or could we have also more panels in a hybrid conference? These are things that we still don't have an answer, but we're definitely considering. Uh, having a, an actually whether to have a panel on this at crypto, it could be, but actually we would just like if you have uh, ideas on how this could be implemented or other ways to decrease the to reduce the uh, the carbon footprint. Of course, we will we we will listen. Shy. Uh, so, any other questions that I? How do you collect ideas for you to read? Uh, for now, I think uh, the best option, I don't know if Kevin agrees, is it would be uh, perhaps the chat that we have, the chat infrastructure that we have uh, using Zulip could be a, a way for you to send us information to start a discussion. But uh, sending emails to us, uh, uh, yes, uh, emails uh, right now would be one solution. I don't know if uh, anybody else has another suggestion. I, I should probably mention that the Zulip instance will be torn down after the conference. And uh, the I'm not planning to save the content and make it available. Uh, we're going to rebuild it for um, PKC. That was a policy decision by the committee that we shouldn't save the, the conversations. They're ephemeral. Also, I think uh, it might be useful for future conferences to know, we compiled some statistics about which countries people came from for the different conferences. And that was useful in trying to construct the schedule for this. Uh, I noticed that one of the sessions starts at 3 a.m. New York time. And uh, the bottom line is that the members are scattered all over the world. And it's very difficult to come up with a uh, schedule that accommodates everyone. Um, there, there's some balance put into the process for this that some people have um, inconvenient times for some of the sessions, but more convenient times for others. Your, um, Eurocrypt tends to be a Europe-centric conference, and so it makes sense to have the schedule slanted toward, um, toward Europe. But I think we want to have uh, inclusiveness and accessibility for everyone to participate in these things. So I think spreading it out a bit for each conference is probably a good idea. So uh, for now, since we are already uh, behind schedule, let me just uh, go back to the last part of the uh, the presentation in which uh, is, is, Sorry, if it, is there another question that I need to answer before switching to a summary of the future events? Yeah, there was a question about the effect of uh, your crypto registration being free this year on the budget. Maybe Brian wants to take that one. Sure, uh, let me go find. So um, it basically hasn't put much of a dent in. Uh, so here's the way I kind of approached it. One, um, if we were gonna go forward with um, adding a uh, virtual component in a hybrid conference model, so like we would be supported. So the cost here is basically the Zoom infrastructure and a lot of volunteer time, right? Um, we do not put a price on uh, Kevin and Kay's time, um, There's a, but there's been a lot of that. Actually, there is a price, but there, there's a lot of that. Um, so I have built that into just the operating costs of the IACR for setting up common infrastructure. And since we didn't know how this was gonna run, I kind of thought it was just the easiest to do uh, to charge the membership fees and make sure that we got memberships, but to just support this as sort of a corporate um, cost as opposed to a, a fee for Eurocrypt. Going forward, 
if we were to incorporate um, virtual participation into each of our events going forward, what I would propose to do would be to pass along some of the cost of running that virtual infrastructure, the ongoing cost of say using Zoom or something else, if whatever that cost is, uh, as, a, as a budget line item to the event that we could then just factor into the overall amount that we charge people. So for example, to give people a feel, uh, you know, to run a webinar uh, at the thousand person limit, which is what we're running right now, Zoom charges us $340 a month plus taxes. And so that's a cost that we're just absorbing at the IACR level. If we were gonna run that on a yearly basis, we'd be adding a few thousand dollars to the operating cost of the organization. And we could either choose to just absorb that as an operating cost or to let every event basically subsidize it to a slight amount by putting a small amount to their budget item. So it hasn't really impacted. Um, I did feel it was very important that we uh, maintain our membership. And so one of the reasons we've structured things the way we have is to make sure that people pay their memberships uh, so that they maintain IACR membership next year. We also heard from more and, and Douglas can maybe talk to this a bit more, more than a few people uh, that um, in their particular uh, reimbursement situations, uh, standalone memberships are not easy to reimburse, but memberships charged as part of conference fees are. And so, um, you know, this also makes it very easy for people to get costs covered by employers and things like that. Um, but really the cost to us to run this experiment uh, outside of web development time and the zoom costs have been really pretty small um, and those are costs that i think are important for the organization to uh, bear as an organizational so uh, not really worried about uh, that as a dent in our finances i hope that answers your questions oh you did ask a question about whether we'd be free going forward again that'll depend um, you know, what the cost is. But right now, this is modest enough that I'm not too worried about it. Sorry, uh, let me unmute myself. There is one more question by Meiji Chibushi regarding the issue of time zones for area conferences. And uh, this, I think, uh, they, of course, this will be, the way time zones will be considered will depend largely on where the conference take, is taking place. And, but this is not a decision uh, in a way that will be taken by the board. It will be a decision that will be taken by the program chairs when they build their programs and they decide what is the most convenient time for having the presentations. So uh, unfortunately we don't have a, this, the solution that the choice will be based on the, on each conference, just depending on what is most convenient. So uh, now I just would like to uh, to, before, to complete the present the presentation. Would like to just recall some of the the future events that uh, will happen. So uh, as I said, uh, the next uh, general conferences for this year will be Crypto Twenty Twenty. Uh, that will take place as, uh, August 17th to the 21st uh, and will be taking place online. Uh, the, then after that, we have Asia Crypt uh, in Daejeon, uh, Korea. Uh, of course, right now the schedule has not changed. It is expected to take place uh, in person, but we're, we keep, we're keeping an eye. Uh, for 2021, as I mentioned before, Eurocrip 21 will be in Zagreb, um, and with uh, Leila and Stefan as general chairs. Crypto 2021 will take place uh, starting on Sunday 15th uh, to Thursday, August 19th at UC Santa Barbara. In the 21, uh, we have uh, the Asia Crip will take place in Singapore. So for 2022, we still don't know much except uh, for Eurocrypt, uh, as I mentioned before, will be in Norway. Were, we call in Boyd still being the general chair. So the dates have changed slightly. So it's gonna be towards the end of May, beginning of June. And Crypto 2022 
uh, will still be, uh, uh, so the dates have already been set for the 14th to the 18th of August. In Asia Crypto, we just, uh, did, uh, no decisions have been made yet. For area conferences, we have a PKC that will be taking place uh, online in, in, a few, in a couple of weeks. So for those of you interested in the area, don't, it would be great if you can join the conference and, uh, and attend. Uh, chess will also be taking place online. Uh, the dates here actually is my thought. It, it, these are the, the original dates of the, uh, the physical event. It's not clear yet whether this will be the same dates that we uh, for the chess conference, but this information will be given uh, later. FSC, as I mentioned, has been moved to the 8th to the 12th of November in Athens. It was supposed to take place in March. And finally, the next two, uh, we have TCC 2020 uh, taking place in Durham, uh, North Carolina uh, in, in no mid-November. And Real World Crypto, which uh, uh, is supposed to come back to, to Europe uh, in January in Amsterdam. So with this, I would like to thank everybody for sticking around and uh, for participating in this first ever virtual membership meeting. So it was, uh, I'm glad that, that we had uh, quite a few people attending. Thank you. So anybody else would like to? There was a words? question. There was a question I'd like to address, which was how feasible is it to have the chat feature chat.icr.org during the non-virtual conferences as well? And it turns out that's really easy to do. That costs us, I think, uh, $20 a month or something. It's, so it's not a big expense and it's pretty easy to bring it up and take it down. As um, yeah, there were some other questions that I could answer. PKC registration will be opening soon. The, the website is already, uh, for the virtual event, is, uh, has, uh, is already online. And I think uh, that's the answer most of the questions. I think the other one was the one that Kevin answered. There was a question about PKC registration. When will it open? Yeah, that's that's what I said. It will be opening soon, and the site is the the website is already uh, is already uh, is already online. There's another question about how many members mm -hmm. are attending this membership meeting. The number of attendees right now is 143. Oh, I see. Yeah, it was uh, higher earlier. Yeah, people are tired. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Thank you, thank you everybody for participating. This uh, is a nice experience. And I guess we're gonna have another one at crypto. So, but I uh, hope you enjoyed the conference and, uh, and I uh, see you tomorrow. I thank think you everybody. That, I, I hate to say it, but I think uh, Yevgeny has asked a question that you've all wanted to answer. Yeah, and then not super important, just a 25 minute talks uh, are probably not feasible because of the time zones. You want to really condense the schedule. So we wish we could have 25 minute talks, but it doesn't seem realistic. Um, I think uh, um, Helga Lipma had suggested that we have TikTok videos of duration <laughs> of a few seconds. I, I saw that on uh, Facebook. Yeah. If again, if you give a very funny ramp session talk, it's six minutes. So uh, that's your chance to get above five minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. I think uh, we are already ten minutes over time. I think it's time to to end the meeting. Thank you again for participating, and uh, look forward to seeing you for the events tomorrow. Bye.